You've played a lot of roles. You've been cast opposite many leading ladies. Yes. So who's the best kisser? Dennis Hopper. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> Saved by the Bell. I could hear that one. That was good. Welcome. Welcome to our wine show. Kyle, thank you so much <laughs> for being with me today. We have a lot of reasons to talk, a lot of exciting projects. But the most important? Wine, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> So I have the 2020 vintage of Pursued by Bear, Perfect. Cabernet Sauvignon, which is your brand, for us to try together. I read somewhere that the name is actually a stage direction from A Winter's Tale. Yes, yes. Act three, scene three from The Winter's Tale, Shakespeare wrote, exit pursued by a bear. And as you can tell from the label, I don't know if you can see that there, it's an actor, he's, that's the actor there with his hat flying off and there's a bear that's in pursuit, but kind of, his tongue is out, so it's tongue in cheek. It's a little bit fun. The bear is actually having a good time. Is this true also that Fred Savage suggested no. this to you? No. There's nothing against Fred, he's a great guy. I've just never met him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was actually a, a dinner that I had uh, with my wife, um, who knows Steve Martin. Uh, this is a long, long time ago, obviously, before I started. I got up the courage, because I'm a huge fan of Steve Martin, of course, and I got up the courage after a couple glasses of wine, I'm sure, to ask him if he thought you know, that would be an appropriate name for a label or a good name for a wine. And mm -hmm. he gave me the thumbs up, and so I was off and running. Have you ever been in the tasting room and someone comes in and sees you and just freaks out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, happens a lot. It happens. <laughs> it happens. It's really fun. Yeah. Give it a try. Absolutely. I, I already did. I you did? Oh. I snuck and taste. Well, yeah, the bottle's half empty. <laughs> now I understand why. <laughs> so many of your characters become sort of like cult classics. Uh, they do, yeah. This is a wine from Umbria from Palo Bea. It is an orange wine. So okay. it's a white wine, Chaviano, that's left on the skins for. 35 days, very minimal intervention winemaking. Wow. Wow. So, but like if you're really into wine yeah. or you're just a genuine nerd, like yeah. this is something that is very much a cold. Like very, very small quantities are produced, very little Ooh. makes it into the United States. I did That's the label sweet. too. All right, do you want to play a little game? Yes. So, Cooper, Twin Peaks. Right. So, yeah. if he was a wine, what would he be? Oh, you know, um, it's, he is so heavily influenced by David Lynch. That's a person, you know, mm -hmm. I borrowed a lot from David. And David is really a, a fan of Bordeaux. Okay. So I would have to go with a Bordeaux. Great yeah. choice. Yeah. All right, what about Trey? Oh, okay, Trey's probably Champagne. Oh, mm. okay. I think if the whole Sex and the City thing, really, Champagne is kind of the, the drink of choice, I think. Whenever I think of New York, I think of Champagne. I don't know why, why is that? I should, I should think of like a Cosmopolitan or something like that, or a Martini. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to be for New Year's, so I think maybe that's why I think Champagne. So. How about okay. Zach? Oh, Joe, Joe Girls. Girls. See, this See, one, one of the ones I sort of went out of my Zach. Did I play a Zach? <laughs> Oh, I did play as act. Now I remember. Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't really. That's a new one. I haven't thought about where he would live in the in the in the wine pantheon, right? Okay. Doesn't have to be wine. <sighs> Something bottled. He's like a wolf in sheep's clothing, kind of. He's a little bit brutal around the edges, I think. Why am I thinking Uzo for some reason? Oh, I'm interesting. getting this sort of okay. Greek. Sorry, I'm making the sound man very nervous. <laughs> 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 Oh, you get paid the big bucks. It's okay. Here's out of left field a little bit, but what about that was pretty much out of left field, Zach. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> how further left are you gonna go? All right, all right I'm ready. All right, ready? Okay, what ready. about Cliff? Oh, Cliff Vandercade. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. He does have that great scene with Halle Berry where they're drinking like a martini in a big giant Flintstones martini glass. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about going to Rocapulco. That's where I would probably go with a martini. And you played Paul in the original Dune. Yes, I did. If Paul Atreides had a wine. Well, you know, the spice figures so heavily into the telling of that story. So it would have to have something with a little bit of um, a Cabernet Franc or something like it that? It could be a Cab Franc, yeah. It could be a Cab Franc, something with, something with a little bit of um, 
a little bit of an edge to it, mm. you know. And some Syrahs, you know, they'll have a little bit of a spicy component, they Absolutely. say, you know. So what do you think about the new Dune? Oh, I love it. I watch the new one, I'm excited for the second one. You know, I'm such a fan of the books, have been since I was 15, the first time I read them. Loved them, um, read them every year, was kind of amazed that I ended up being cast as Paul. Something like that just doesn't happen. So anything to do with, with Dune and the telling of that story, I'm interested in, you know, yeah. and I thought they did a great job. Right. You know, have the advantage of, of, of years later, so all of the special effects and everything much more sophisticated. I was going in with a little bit of trepidation, and I thought, well, here's the real Dune, and our Dune will just be sort of tossed aside. Oh, never. No, and, no. I, and I came away saying, you know what, I think actually both, both can exist in, yeah. in a happy place, you know? So I love ours for what it is, and, and I really enjoyed the new one as well. Did yeah. anyone consult you on the remake? Oh, yes. I was on set every day. No, I was not. They didn't. They, <laughs> I believed they, you. They, I know. Okay. Of course they consulted me. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's so funny. I did run into Timothy at like an awards show um, after everything, and we had just a quick little moment, and he said how challenging the role was because so much of it is internal. There are not scenes where you can kind of let the character breathe, you know. He's, it, it's very much in the head, and, and I said, I know, I know, it's really challenging to try to create a real person there. That was kind of fun, you know, yeah. playing, both of us playing the same role and having, you know, kind of similar kind of challenges in, with it, so that's good. All right, I have one last bottle okay. for us to try together. Just girl. one? I brought a bottle from a winery that has significance to the whole American wine history. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. It's so amazing, actually, where we are in sort of the world stage in comparison to old world regions that have literally centuries, 30 generations yeah. of, of people. So this I brought because, as you know, uh, Chateau Montalina and Chardonnay beat French wines blind tasted in 1976 at the Judgment of Paris. Yep. They, the French had to take us seriously. <laughs> they weren't happy about it, <laughs> but they had to. Oh, no, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. And so you mm. have some exciting projects coming mm. out mm. this year. Yeah, so I've got a new series for Am on Amazon called Fallout based on a very, very popular video game, an immersive video game. So they've set that world up, the okay. world of Fallout and they tell a story within that. And so I play uh, one of the overseers, uh, Vault 33. That'll release uh, April 12th. Okay. And then I have a podcast. Varnum Town? That's called Varnum Town, okay. yeah, at the end of what, January. What does that mean? So Varnum Town is a little community, a little coastal community, the name of the town in North Carolina. And it's hard to call it a town. There's 300 people that live there. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, late 70s and 80s, and even early 90s, it was a hub of drug trafficking for um, Escobar's, um, oh. yeah, cartel okay. that wasn't from Colombia. <laughs> no, no. And I'd heard about the story, and so I contacted a friend of mine who's an investigative reporter, a guy named Josh Davis, and we went down there and we interviewed many of the participants, many of whom were still alive, uh, about this experience and what they went through. And so the podcast is all about that story. All about that wow. story. This Thank is lovely, by the way. Thank you. I think it's showing really well. And actually, yeah. all of the wines we tasted today were the same vintage. They're all 2020. 2020 so I thought it'd be that. nice to sort of compare across the board. This is good. Mm, cheers. Thanks. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, Kat. This is good. Good morning drinking. <laughs> People don't have to know what, what the time is. Oh, you're fresher in the morning. Mm -hmm. Palette. Mm. Mm. I didn't bring it. Oh,